This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Due to the recent pandemic, many of our customers have been asking if we have the materials that can be used to make face shields, and we do. We're going to use materials at Sayerite to show you one of the many ways that a face shield can be made. Let's get started. Before making face shields, be sure to wash your hands thoroughly. First thing that we are going to need is some patterning material, and this is just a very thin uh, cardboard type material, but you could use paper as well. Um, nice thing about something a little more permanent is that you can use the pattern over and over again. Um, what I've done here already is I have essentially drawn a partial rectangle. Uh, we're 15 inches across the top. We're eight and a half inches in height, and I happen to take my edges down six and a half inches in a uh, perpendicular manner from the top and then at the center point I've gone out four inches on either side of the center point and the reason for that is that for my face shield I want these right and left corners to be rounded so that they don't dig into my shoulders and the easiest way to round them is just to take a dinner plate or in this case a styrofoam disposable plate line up the edges of the plate with our two end points and then simply uh, use it as a template. Next, we want to cut it out along the perimeter lines. And that becomes our, our pattern uh, for the clear portion of the shield. With our pattern cut, I just wanted to show you generally what we're gonna need for this project. We will need our clear uh, uh, material. In this case, we're using something called monofilm, but you could use any clear vinyl. Uh, something stiffer works better. Um, we, we are using a two inch elastic. Uh, we have our hook and our, our loop um, for uh, uh, making the band adjustable. We have half inch uh, sew foam. And uh, then from the standpoint of tools, I've got my clear acrylic ruler that, ruler that I always use, some scissors, a couple of marking devices. Uh, this is a scry ball that works pretty well on the, on the clear material for marking and we already talked about the plate and then I've just got a rag to clean things up. And that's really all you need to do these uh, and they're very quick. All right, so I have my clear out, my monofilm, and then I'm gonna mark. And there's our pattern. Next, we wanna cut this out and we'll just cut on our lines. I neglected to mention that before I did any of this, I followed the CDC guidelines and washed my hands properly uh, so as not to contaminate the glass. Okay, our pattern is cut. If you used the black scry ball pencil available from Sayerite, the lines will easily come off the monofilament with a wet rag as seen here. Time to sew our hook and loop in place. Line up three inches on one end of each piece of elastic and we are simply going to sew a box stitch around the outside. Okay. All right, I have my stitch length set uh, about four millimeters or so, and uh, I am just going to start at one corner and reverse a couple times. To sew this, we're using V69 polyester thread in a size number 18 needle. Pivot on my needle. This is being sewn with the Sarite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine and it's set up in the industrial tabletop with workhorse servo motor. Do some reversing at the end and then, uh, uh, then I'm going to get my next piece in place. Follow the same procedure for sewing the hook in place on your other elastic strip. When you come to a corner, bury your needle, lift your foot, lower your foot, and then continue to sew. All right, I put my, uh, my clear on top of the template again so you can see, uh, see it better. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sewing our elastic straps with the hook and loop uh, onto the upper corners, the non-rounded corners. And I'm gonna want my, uh, my loop, which is the soft uh, hook and loop product, to be face up on the right side. And we're gonna sew it about a quarter of an inch in 
uh, lined up with the top. I want my hook, or the, uh, the rough portion of the hook and loop, uh, to be on, on this side, and I want it facing down. And the reason again for this is that I want this soft portion, if anything, to be hitting my head, and I want the, the, uh, the rougher part facing away from my head. And now we're gonna sew those on. All right, let's stitch this on, and we're just gonna line it up, overlap it by a quarter of an inch or so, and we're gonna start it at the top. And I'm doing this in straight stitch. You could do this in zigzag if you prefer. Uh, zigzag might be a little more positive, but Straight stitch works. I'm gonna get a couple reverses in here at the top. And then bring this down. And get a couple reverses in here at the bottom. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Now remember before we move this, we already know which way we want this one on. So I'm gonna hold it in place so that I don't lose my position. And then swing it over here. And now we'll sew from the bottom up. Again, making sure that I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch inside. All right, I've already marked my half inch sew foam. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting four and a half inches in width or thickness, and I've got 15 inches, which again matches the, uh, the top of my pattern. So 15 inches here, okay? And we just can scissor cut this stuff, very simple to cut. Okay, now what we should do is we take our sew foam and we're gonna flip it so that the fabric side, there's actually a mesh fabric side is facing up, and we're gonna flip our, our shield so that the, the uh, unfinished side, the side that uh, you can see the, the edges of the glass up here at the elastic is up. And we're gonna line this up so that this dimension from the top of the, the clear to the bottom of the sew foam is about an inch and a half. We're, our, we know our elastic is two inches, so that's roughly an inch and a half there and uh, that'll work fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew here all the way across at the top. All right, since we got a half inch foam here that we have to sew through, always make sure you drop your presser foot. If you don't, you're gonna end up with some pretty gnarly looking stitches. And then what we wanna do is start right at the edge and we are going to do some reversing and then holding everything in position. We're gonna just start feeding it through. And do some reversing at the end. All right, so let's now flip this over and you'll start to understand why we did this. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be bringing this edge back to here and we're gonna be sewing it so that it is uh, uh, lined up with the elastic on both ends, which as you can see, sort of creates a, a rounded effect to the foam, which will allow it to rest against your head better and push the clear away from your face further so that your goggles will still fit. Um, but the other reason for doing this is uh, we're only sewing through one layer of the foam uh, by offsetting it like this. So it makes it easier for our sewing equipment. To make this easier uh, to position the foam, I'm going to put my clear acrylic ruler and line it up to the corners of our elastic. And I'm gonna scribe a, a line there. And that's gonna give me uh, something that I can follow while I'm putting this foam down and sewing it. I'm gonna get this under the machine, drop our foot, and uh, we're gonna do a couple of forward stitches and then some reversing. And then we will continue on and we'll just match up our foam on this line as we, as we run down the edge. I like to do it just in segments like this.
And when we get to the end, of course, we're gonna do some reverse stitching. Okay. All right, our face shield is done and I can hook it on so that it's comfortable for me. And uh, you can see that I have great protection. Uh, and I wanna talk about how these are used in the medical industry today. Uh, basically, they're disposable. Uh, so when you go into a room where you're worried about what a patient might have, uh, you're wearing your, your surgical goggles, you're wearing your N95 or N99 or N100 uh, uh, mask, and what you're trying to do today is protect those articles so that you can reuse them. So this becomes the outer defense, and uh, when, you're, when you're done with it, you simply rip it off and throw it away. Want to make a lot of these face mask shields? Here's the best way to nest them on the SoFoam and the monofilm. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools that we used to make this face mask shield. Thanks for watching, and stay safe.